me oír? I'm here with Brian Atticus of A Drowning Angel. How are you doing today, Brian? Doing well. Very good. Where are you from, Atticus? Uh, Puerto Rico. And I understand you're in America today. Where are you at? Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta. What are you doing up there? Uh, visiting uh, my cousins. I've been here for about two weeks. I'm leaving in two days. How is the weather right now? I'm not sure how it is in Atlanta. I know it's hot over here. Yeah, it's hot over here too, man. I, I I haven't seen any rain at all since I got here. It's been so dry. It's pretty intense summer. Yeah. Do you recall what the first uh, genre or band that you were really into was, and how old were you? Mm, this is going to sound funny, but I was 13, and the first band I was considered a fan was Coldplay. Coldplay, really? Yeah, Coldplay. You know, their catchy songs and shit. Sure. Do you yeah. still listen to Coldplay? Yeah, I do. Secretly. Secretly? <laughs> that takes care of one of my questions later on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your What's your favorite album of Coldplay's? Uh, probably their, uh, uh, their first one. It has uh, my favorite single of all times, uh, Speed of Sound. I never get tired of that song. Never. <laughs> So when did you realize you were interested in creating music? When I was about 16, no, 16, yeah, 16. When I first started this, uh, uh, a duet band with my, uh, with my old friend, we used to play guitar together. I mean, he used to play guitar and I used to be on the keyboards. When I first bought a keyboard, uh, didn't really know how to play it until now. Um, we started playing. Uh, made random songs. So yeah, uh, that's how I pretty much got interested in it. And then I went on. What got you into it? What was it that made you say, I want to make some music? Two things. The first was uh, randomly getting uh, meeting up with my friend. Uh, we used to talk about Muse a lot, the band Muse. Mm -hmm. And how we wanted to make a band like Muse keyboards on uh, uh keyboards guitars whatever uh eventually the uh, my friend the one i mentioned before uh we jammed whatever we got into an argue and that's how i eventually went off solo and started the other projects i did could you talk about some of those projects first was my first ever 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 project it was called gothic nine i changed the name later on to a drowning angel but yeah, I started it off as a noisy uh, experimental project. It, it reminds me of Drayson's music a lot. Kind of a ambient noise ambient. Yeah, thing. I used to make uh, yeah I, I used to make music like that. But eventually, uh, what got me into making electronic music, weird uh, electronic music, was uh, Nine Inch Nails. When I used to download uh, their multi charts via Nine.com. That's what pretty much got me into wanting to make electronic music, you know, mixing stuff. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was so cool that uh, he released all those multi-tracks first to play with. Yeah, man. I mean, who, do uh, who does that? Exactly. You know, give it to fans to remix songs. It's unique, you know? You're currently in a Drowning Angel. Um, how did you come up with that name? I have a feeling it's more Reznor-inspired. Yeah, written <laughs> all over it. Yeah, uh, I took the name from uh, "How to Destroy Angels" single, uh, "A Drowning," uh, and mixed it out with "Angel." I, I I wanted the name to reflect the music. You know, I didn't want a cheesy name. I I think it's an excellent name, and it doesn't feel like uh, it feels like your own. You know. Like you took yeah. it from uh, a drowning, or from how to destroy angels, but it doesn't feel like a ripped-off name or anything. No, I mean I do take a lot of influences, and I do listen to their EP uh, a lot, a lot, a lot. But yeah, 
So it's not, uh, you know, nothing like it. When are we going to get more How to Destroy Angels? Man. <laughs> That's not really, I know that's not a question you can answer. <laughs> Maybe I'm interviewing the wrong person you know, for that man, information. Do you, uh, you think we could get Trent Reston on the line so you know, oh, he can ask man. that question? <laughs> that would be too cool. I don't yeah. know if I could hand. I don't know if I could handle it. Me neither, man. I think I will eventually shit my pants and die from going to coma. Shit, Trent Reznor. So, how would you describe the music of uh, a drowning angel to someone who has never heard it before? Mm, experimental, industrial. No, post-industrial. That's what I always say. I, 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 I go like, hey, here's my post-industrial band, experimental. But I don't really like showing my project to uh, certain people, you know, not to everyone, because I think music, it, the music I make is not for everyone, you know, not everyone is going to like it. Sure, it's kind of specialized. It's not a, it's yeah. not the typical pop mainstream type stuff. Yeah, it, and it's not either your typical industrial band, put your sound here band, you know? Yeah. I try to stay away from the uh, industrial music, you know, the real industrial music. With the uh, uh, black metal vocals and, you know, harsh synths. Yeah, your music tends to be, uh, it's definitely in the post-industrial pulse, but it doesn't have, it's, it's got melody. Yeah. Uh, the reason that happened, you know, you, uh, you remember two years ago when the first release came out? Uh-huh. It was trip-hop influence. Uh, it had... Uh, it's uh, industrial influences, but it wasn't too much. After, uh, let's see, by August last year, uh, we joined the local industrial scene. And that's how we met uh, other projects, uh, industrial projects. And that's how we pretty much shaped the sound, you know? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I can definitely hear the uh, multiple in influences there, and it comes together well. Yeah. But you also have a bandmate, uh, Clay. How would you describe uh, her role and what's your role in the in the uh, creation of the music? All right. Typically, we start off by me making a song. After it's done, uh, Clay comes over. I write a few lyrics. She comes over and uh, makes the lyrics better. I don't know. I don't know why she doesn't want to. Uh, take the role of songwriting. She writes better songs than I do. <laughs> and a way better songwriter than I am. So you usually write the lyrics and she kind of revises them? Yeah, it goes like this. I write, a, I write a verse and a chorus and then those two things first and then she comes in, uh, she makes them better and she writes the rest. Or we team up and we write the song. What title would you give yourself in regards to being a musician? Like a producer, composer, um, songwriter. Producer. Songwriter. Both. With a lot of us in, uh, in the EMG group, especially, you know, since a lot of us specialize in kind of electronic based musician, uh, music, you kind of see a lot of that. Uh, we play multiple roles. It's hard to kind of define a specific thing, you know? Yeah. We all, uh, we all, we all have our, our own distance out in the group. That's what makes it original, you know. Mm -hmm. That's for sure, and there's quite a bit of variety, which is pretty cool. Yeah, a lot of variety, man. And you got uh, 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 hip hop, industrial, rock, pretty much everything. Okay, here's my new favorite question. Uh, what do you think of the term techno, and do you ever get confronted with that term? I get angry, man. I feel like hitting him in, uh, hitting him in the face. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At first, when I started showing uh, songs to my friends, they were like, oh, dude, is that techno? You should DJ. And I'm like, I'm not a fucking DJ. And this is not techno. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to get the same answer to that question over and over again. Yeah, it's frustrating, dude, because people don't understand the meaning of electronic music. I mean, the sub and stuff. You know, it's just, uh... So, take us through the journey of a typical song, uh, songwriting process for you. Like, is there a certain part you start with? You start writing a certain part? How does a song usually come together when you're working on it? 
uh, when I'm listening to the uh, uh, instrument, in, uh, in, uh, instrument version, I usually start writing a verse. The chorus is the hardest thing for me. I, I usually write songs with no choruses, you know. Mm -hmm. It's the hardest part for me. But yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I, I don't write a whole lot of lyrics anymore, but the chorus was usually the easier part, and then I had a harder time filling in the verses. Yeah, man, I used to write a lot, but I, I've been kind of away from the pencil, and uh, it's been kind of hard for me to write songs, like, hard. And you know, you uh, I don't know if that happens to you, but sometimes I get frustrated. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes it's pretty hard, you know, blog and stuff. You got writer's blog. Yeah, I have a hard time. I really have a hard time anymore with coming up with anything that sounds interesting or or has any kind of message to it, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. It's like, ugh, what am I writing? Yeah. So of the entire process from, like, writing, recording, mixing, uh, performing, all that, what's your favorite part? Performing and mixing, but mostly performing, you know, seeing all those people, uh, you know, enjoy your music and dance to it. It's pretty awesome. Have you been playing uh, many shows lately? Not anymore. We haven't played since April. Uh, we, were, uh, we had a show on May, but we couldn't make it. But we did play uh, on March. And no, we only, we play like three shows only. We haven't played that much yet. Because uh, things here in the scene have been a little bit uh, turned down. Oh, There's no. pretty much uh, the bands in here. They're not playing anymore. The you know the uh, the, uh, the local industrial projects mm -hmm. here. Uh, they're not you know that much into playing live anymore. You know it's pretty hard to uh, play live with our music. I mean, if I if I want to play a show, I I I I would like to play with uh, bands with the same musical style. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and here in Puerto Rico, we uh, at first the scene here was pretty good, but now uh, it's pretty hard now. You know, most of the DJs quit it and they're not playing anymore. Oh, that's rough, man. Your scene like fell apart on you. Yeah, man. The glory. I well, I wasn't in the glory days, but uh, one of the promoters that used to make industrial shows, they even had Combi Cries here once. Really? Yeah, in, in two thousand five. That's how alive the scene was here. But eventually, I came too late. I came when I was about to die. That, that sucks. Yeah, it sucks a lot, man. It's sad. So, of that music process that I uh, mentioned, the writing, recording, and all that, what's your least favorite part? Songwriting. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, I... I hate making instrumental songs. Like every song I make, it's like I'm gonna put vocals on it. I'm gonna write lyrics. But yeah, mostly the lyric part and the vocal process too. Man, it's frustrating. Yeah, the most hardest thing is recording vocals and getting the melodies right. You know, and I don't think that's unique to us either. But that's the same thing with me. Is the music's easy? It's the lyrics and yeah. the vocals are incredibly the hard. Music. At first, it flows very easily, you know, man, it's, you feel good. Hey, it's going to be epic, but when you start recording vocals and you hear that it's not working out, you get like, ugh. So musically, what do you feel are your strong, what are your strengths? Playing the synths. I love playing with synths. And, and uh, what, do you, what are you less confident at? What do you think is your weakness? My weakness? Singing. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah I, I gotta say man i think you did a pretty good job on vampires you think it fits the style of the song i mean i guess if you had to like sing some light melody stuff or something maybe it wouldn't have worked so well but the the yeah, tone be fucked. <laughs> yeah yeah the tone fit the song i thought yeah i've been kind of uh wimpy with that song but yeah i've been getting that a lot of it was and it has helped. When October rolls around, I want to do a Halloween show. And uh, I totally want to play vampires on that episode. Really? Or vampire, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Vampire. I, I love Halloween. I'm excited for Halloween. 
Yeah, Halloween's epic. Yeah. You know, I wrote that song Vampire. I wrote it when I was probably in ninth, ninth grade or something. I wrote the verse. I mean, I wrote the uh, uh the chorus. Vampire, my dirty, dirty. Really? And eventually, yeah, eventually I found the notebook, the old notebook. I used to write a lot of, uh, a lot of lyrics. And I said, hey, sounds good. Let me try it out. And eventually it became the song. It came back to life four years later.
That song is super catchy too, man. When I listen to it, it's stuck in my head forever. Yeah, the uh, everything was kind of uh, it all came up pretty good, but random at the same time. I took uh, a lot of dancey influences in the song. You know, to make you move. What kind of software do you use? Yeah, uh, I use GarageBand, and well, not anymore. I use uh, mostly Fruity Loops and Mixcraft. 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 I don't think I've ever had any experience with that one. It's pretty easy. I only use it for uh, since recording, and I mix in uh, FL. How do you find mixing in FL Studio? That always. I know a lot of us in the group use it, but for me, like, I always had a hard time. Uh, using the the interface seemed kind of weird. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, I like uh, the the options they have. They're pretty good and professional as well. But it's kind of hard. You need to play around. It took me a lot of time to get used to the mixing in FL. It's actually harder for me to structure a song in FL than rather than mixing. What kind of hardware do you use? Like synths or what, anything else? Well, right now I have a uh, a MIDI. No, two MIDIs and keyboards that's the only hardware i have and mics what drives you to create music what's your motivation mostly uh you know uh the feeling to want to do something you know something of your own okay who do you uh what or who do you feel has the most influence on your music chris corner from snicker pimps is my is my muse and trent Reznor. And are you inspired by any non-music sources? Books, poems I read. And what is your ultimate goal in creating music? What would you like to accomplish? Uh, get a fan base. Uh, you know, not become famous or anything, but have a fan base that enjoys the music, you know? And be able to play live in different places. How long do you see yourself making music? Probably... I don't know, to the day I die. That feeling will never go away. If you could collaborate with anyone else in the world, who would it be? And what would you do with them? This would be a pretty obvious answer. Um, George Romero. Yeah? Yeah, right, uh, you know, zombie script. Film it together. You know, the old man is pretty much kind of down to that kind of stuff, you know? He's always saying, hey, um, um, if you're a producer and shit, contact me. So he's pretty, you know, awesome. Who is a musician that you can't stand? A uh, musician that I can't stand? Yeah. That would be... Mm, Nicki Minaj, too. I can't stand her either. Say you were with a, a, a record company, and they said you had yeah. to do a song with her. What would you have her do? I would have her scream her random things. The, the words that she says. And, I don't know, I would distort them up and make them to a weird sound mix them into the music i don't know that's the first thing that came to mind i don't know she she sings very weirdly i mean no that's not even singing it's stupid how she is famous and shit but you know her music does suck and i hate it but that's pop music for you yeah yeah there's a lot of people without talent making pretty decent money off of it yeah, and there's a lot of people with no music taste that rely on the ever dying landscape of the radio, you know? Yeah. Radio music is dead. I don't even listen to radio anymore. Last time I did, it was three days ago. I just got, I, I listened to that uh, boy band, One Direction. God, how can people like music like that? You know, compared to the 90s, the good music from the 90s. Yeah, I think about that sometimes. I th- uh, the other day I was thinking about Nine Inch Nails. And given the way that most mainstream music goes, it blows my mind that Nine Inch Nails was as big as they were in the 90s. Yeah, man. Nine Inch Nails went to the pop culture. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. The Downward Spiral is got to be one of the most uh, unfriendly albums as far as mainstream music goes. I totally agree. And it still, it made a hit. He made a hit with that album. Mm Mm-hmm. But I think probably what's happening now, it's because uh, the big guys, producers, you know, the people that control the music media, uh, they're concentrating on bad music. It's not like the 90s that they discovered grunge and alternative music, and it was all over the radio. 
the the same thing is happening now. They discovered a certain new genre of music, but this time it sucks. It's everything's so manufactured now too. Anything on the radio that is. Yeah, and it's so pretty much everything sounds the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it has no soul to the music, you know. Yeah. And what about hey? And MTV died. That's pretty sad, you know. Oh yeah, MTV died a while ago, and MTV used to be the big thing. You know, now the, those bands that used to be in MTV just went underground to the net. Well, I think MTV it's a, it's the same thing as like the music, uh, the the record companies is they seen an ability to like manufacture all this content that they felt they were guaranteed to make so much money off of, and that's all they did. So anything worthwhile died in that process, you know. Yeah. VH1 used to have a uh, good music programming too, but they eventually sold out to the uh, real show industry, you know, uh, reality shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that took everything over. Yeah, it took everything over, and yeah. I think the music industry died when MTV died. Yeah, that's true. It's true. They used to have, dude, they used to have pretty good artists in there. I mean, of every kind. Now, pretty much what, uh, uh, what you see on MTV is pretty much Lady Gaga, Nicki Minaj, and fucking Jersey Shore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I can't stand that show. How can people watch that, seriously? <laughs> I don't understand it. And I'll talk to people and they're like, well, it's so terrible. That's why, what makes it good. But I'm like, no, it's just. No, it's just, I don't know. I mean, they actually get paid for arguing about stupid stuff and god i wish i had a life like that yeah <laughs> yeah no shit life would be much easier if you would be on your easy short but <laughs> yeah uh name a few of your favorite albums you don't have to put too much thought into it just a couple albums that have been your favorite okay. for a long time for a long time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. antichrist superstar by marlon manson uh, the famous Pretty Hate Machine. That was the first album I got from Nine Inch Nails. And Bloodsport from uh, Snicker Pimps. Oh, and oh, and Melancholy and the Infinite uh, Sadness from the Smashing Pumpkins. Nice, man. That is, that's some excellent taste in music, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> the the Nine Inch Nails and Antichrist Superstar by Marilyn Manson. Uh. That I listened to that all through high school, constantly. Man, I envy you, man. You were in that period. You were yeah. in that age. Yeah. Ah, oh, the nineties. So this is this is kind of something I've been thinking about lately. Uh, do you feel you'd ever be one of those people that that would stop listening to new music? It seems like there's a lot of people that when they get older, they st stop checking out new music and they just listen to the stuff from their time period. Well, I've already gotten to that point, literally. Well, I from time to time look for new bands, industrial bands, but not as much. I always, you go to my iTunes and you'll see the same library again and again. I don't listen to that, you know, new music anymore, pretty much. Unless I discover it and I like it, but I don't actually look for it. You know, sit down, hey, I'm going to look for new music. But there is a lot of good music out there. Is a good modern music. The internet is awesome for being able to find new stuff. Yeah, you know? man, you can find every single genre of music there is in the, over the internet. I'm grateful for that. Me too. That's the we were talking about radio a little bit ago. That's the, I never listen to the radio. It's only stuff I find off the internet. Yeah, imagine how well. You, well, you were in that decade where uh, there was no. Hey, I just listened to this song. I'm gonna download it over Torrent. No, yeah, it was. You know, we had to buy our music, or, or what we'd do is, when I, when I was younger, if it was a like a radio single that was good, yeah, you just wait till it came onto the radio and then you'd record it to cassette and listen to the cassette. <laughs> Oh yeah, I heard that. You have to stand there waiting for the song to come out again, right? Mm-hmm. Damn, man. But the Napster came out towards the end of uh, uh, towards the end of my high school years, and yeah, the guy that watched the Titanic sink. 
<laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah, they eh, nasty was a good thing, but we all know it literally destroyed. It has been proven and said by artists, it has destroyed music. So, what have you been listening to lately? Uh, a lot, a lot of uh, indie rock bands. <laughs> I don't know why. I randomly started listening to the Cranberries, Kings of Leon. I discovered my love for for Goldplay again. All right, and you have another song you'd like to play for us. What song is that? And tell us about it. Well, my personal favorite, uh, Lost in Silent Hill. Uh, the concept for it is pretty much obvious. Uh, me and uh, Clay are big fans of the Silent Hill series, and we pretty much decided to get along, write a song about it, and record it. <laughs> I'm 
No, that song is awesome. And one of my favorite things about it is you put the air raid siren in there from the game. Yeah, I I took a lot of uh, influences from the composer, Akira Yamaoka. He mixes uh, atmospheric dark trip hop. It's pretty awesome. You should listen to it. I will have to check it out, man. I know you've posted a couple tracks in the past, but I'll have to check more out. Yeah. That was my favorite thing from the first game, was that creepy air raid siren horn. Yeah, man, it, it's creepy. Every time you heard it, I mean, I heard it in the game, I go like, shit. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> but Silent, uh, I don't know if you're a big fan of the games, but Silent Hill 1 is a pretty good game. Yeah, I've only played the first one, I, and I really liked it, and I don't know why I haven't played the other ones, but it was one, it's one of my favorite like horror-themed video games ever. It's so creepy. Yeah, dude, and for the time, for its time, it's pretty good. Yeah, oh yeah. And scary as well. It, and the game is still scary if you play it at, at 1 a.m. It's a psychological horror, man. It gets to you eventually. Outside of music, what else do you like to do? What else do I like to do? Well, go to college. One of my favorite things. I love uh, going to college. How's that going? Where are you at in your uh, uh, your progress? I'm at CCAT, uh, College of uh, Cinematography and Arts. Um, currently studying sound engineering, and it's all going pretty good. I love it. I've learned a lot of things from sound engineering, and it has totally helped me with my music and the way I make it. That's excellent. I was just about to ask you that when you mentioned the sound engineering. Yeah, it, you will learn a lot, and you won't be the same. <laughs> Besides that, I uh, I like uh, I organize shows for local bands. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty addictive making shows. Kind of fell in love with it. That's my new hobby besides music. So you mentioned the industrial scene kind of died out there. Uh, so what uh, what kind of bands are 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 getting shows played there? The it died because the scene literally started back in from what the olders have told me. Started back in 2002, I think. And those people got old. You know, they grew up. And the people that they were left, they were these guys that don't really enjoy industrial music. So eventually, it died. And right now, what runs around is the hardcore scene. So pretty much, bands are getting shows from that. Gotcha. Do you enjoy the hardcore scene? Yeah, I like... Uh, I don't listen to hardcore, but I... Uh, I really like supporting them because they're really down to what they're doing. Sure. You know, I I sure hate a few bands because some of them are, you know, ugh. they think they're the best and they think they're on a competition. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that typical rivalry. Yeah, yeah. Bands have. For sure. But besides that, yeah, I'm pretty... Uh, I I enjoy their music. What would you say is your geekiest interest? Like TV sh- out of TV shows, movies, and stuff. What do you uh, turn into a fanboy over? What did it turn into a fanboy over? Mm. Zombies and synthesizers. It's a pretty good combination. Yeah, I'm a li- li- dude. I am literally obsessed with synths. I mean, I could look at pictures of synths all day. Now, the synthesizers you use in your music. Um, do you do a lot of software synths, VSTs and stuff, or do you do, um, is there also like a lot of hardware synth stuff you use? Not really, I uh, pretty much use uh, virtual. I don't have, uh, I don't really have synth, uh, synth software, I only have keyboards and midis, but no real synths yet. So what is next for you, uh, music-wise? Do you have any upcoming uh, albums or shows? Well, we're going to play, I think in... October, we had two shows booked. And for the music, uh, we already started writing for our full album. Nice, I'm excited for that. Yeah, uh, it should take me a long, long time to make it, you know, but yeah. That's all right. It'll eventually come. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. <laughs> we waited for two years for your uh, fake and plastic EP. We'll wait. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll wait for the next <laughs> album, man. It was, it was, uh, eventually the EP was supposed to be an album and then I shaped it into an EP and then I shaped it into an album again and then I decided, fuck it, EP. Sure. Well, sometimes that's better than just like trying to force some filler. Yeah. But a lot of things happened before I released it, you know, 
pretty much the reason I was the I didn't it took me a lot of time was because my first singer, uh, the first a drowning angel singer, wasn't pretty much down into the project and it was pretty hard to get together and record. We did much we pretty much didn't practice a lot. Yeah, I recall uh, seeing some of your frustration with how that would go sometimes. Uh, tell me about it, man. But eventually, when Clay joined, it all turned way better. The music got better. Everything got better. The process got better. You're definitely another case that it's been very interesting watching uh, your music progress because you'll post like earlier versions of songs and stuff like that. It's pretty cool to think about when I first, when we first started EMG, and even before that, when I first started talking to you the stuff you were doing uh as opposed to the stuff now like yeah the progression of sound is pretty impressive yeah mostly it all has to do uh with me uh playing live and with clay joining the project if those things wouldn't ha- uh wouldn't happen that's how i wouldn't how do i say this i wouldn't be able to achieve that sound if those th- it, those two things didn't happen she has a very nice voice too, and it complica- it complements the music very well. Yeah, I was very lucky to meet her and got her into the project. She was in another band, but now she's working full time with us. Oh, I mean, with a drowning. Really? Yeah, she's uh she comes from a, a metal alternative band, I think. Yeah, it's called Backseat Driver. Nothing like a drowning. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, where can people find your music and uh, and other uh, Drowning Angel stuff? Like, what are your what are your websites? Well, I have a, a I actually have a website, but I'm still editing it. Not fully completed with that, but you can find me our, our music at yeah Bandcamp and our Facebook. But we mostly have our music on Bandcamp. All right, thank you, Brian, for talking with us today. I definitely appreciate it, and we hope to have you on again. Yeah, thank you. It was a uh, fun, fun experience. Hope to be here again. Thank you, Brian, for sitting with uh, for talking. Uh, thank you, Brian. <laughs> this is the rest of the interview. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right.